hello everyone welcome back to my channel so today i have a video on this pretty simple look but it's you know watch me work it's what i did for my client and i just so happened to record it so hopefully you'll enjoy and it's just various shades of purple cat eye glitter holographic situation and then some bling of course which i think is really the feature on this set so this is my client's previous set when it was freshly done and as you may be able to tell, we're going to be refilling her baby boomer pink and white ombre for this set. So you'll get to see how that's done. And this is that same set after about four or five weeks. All her stones still there. We're doing good um, with the adhesion. No lifting. The chrome is intact. Everything's good. So first we have to take off what we have. And I'm using the Poochie's Nails Coarse. It may be extra coarse. Don't quote me on that. But it's the smooth top bit. And I'm using it with my e-file. And guys, a lot of the information that is pertinent to the video or stuff that I use frequently or often, like my e-file and stuff, is going to be below in the videos. So um, just take a look there. And you can always ask me stuff, but um, if I answered it, it kind of gets, you know, a little tedious, a little stressful trying to answer it all over again when the information is in the comments. So thank you in advance for reading. Um, so I just filed down the length a little bit, as you've seen, and I'm going in with the skiver bit. And I'm sorry that I am out of focus. The camera was not at the best angle. It was kind of focusing on my hand at first but you know y'all if you've been on this channel you've seen me do this a trillion million times but i'm using my skiver bit and i'm laying it as parallel to the nail as possible so that i don't cause any rings of fire um holding it at that angle like an elevated angle can um add rings to the nail rings of fire into the nail so next i'm going in with the round bit and i'm going around the cuticle area and this client she develops a lot of dry skin and a lot of dead skin that grows on her nail plate. So um, buffing it alone doesn't really do the trick. So we're going in with the nippers and we're going to cue the controversy now. Now what I'm not cutting is the live skin. Now the laws and rules and regulations in your state may vary. So this may be something you practice all the time and you might even cut even a little closer, a little better. This might be something you don't practice at all because you don't feel comfortable. Other rules are different in your state. In Texas, we can trim skin that is not living. And the rules are generally vague because people don't care about nail techs that much. That's another topic. <laughs> so you can see after I clip the dead skin, I'm going in with that round bit again and basically smoothing out any inconsistencies. So after that, I cleanse the nail, use my prepping products, my primers, everything like that. Again, information like that. Um, you can watch in other videos and I'll go in more detail. Uh, I have some products I'm, you know, trying out, you guys. So, um, you know, you'll get that information in the future. But, you know, I love Protein Bond, you know, a little OPI um, Bond Aid for your dehydrator just fine so i'm going in with my poochie's number 16 brush which i always generally use so i'm just filling at the cuticle area of course where else um the length of the nails were taken down so i don't have to add as much to the apex to kind of help with the balancing and the weighting of the nails because they're not going to be as long as if i didn't cut them when i first started this process so I am filling the back of the nail just with, real simple with one bead. Maybe it takes two sometimes. Don't get caught up in the amount of, you know, balls or beads or whatever you call them that you need. Use enough to get the job done. And you can see I use a finger to kind of push the acrylic that I got um, real close to those sidewalls or actually on the um, sidewalls. Kind of push that back. And now I'm adding a second bead just to kind of um, 
help add a little bit of thickness past the free edge. You'll make sure you have a nice sturdy nail. So this is just a little bit of a closer look of me applying product um, near the cuticle area, just so you can get an idea of how I apply it and how it flows and how close I like to get to the cuticle area. And when you get product near the um, actual live skin, you want to try to keep the brush off the live skin as much as possible um, to avoid overexposure. Does it happen? Yes, of course. But um, when I tuck it in, I try to be mostly on the nail or use my finger, which has a glove, as much as possible. But of course, it's happening. I'm not saying, I mean, you can see me touching the skin, but just, you know, try to limit that as much as possible. There's people that'll sop a finger up with monomer and we just don't want that at all. So you can see me just applying the beads and I did slow this whole little application section down um, probably by half as much just, just so you can see it a little better. It is sped up but not as much as I have been speeding it up. So this is the refill on the nail that is going to um, stay the baby boomer and so I'm applying that bead and being conscious of the ombre effect that I have and making sure that still looks really good so I'm applying to the be a bead to the back of the nail as I usually do but then I'm gonna go in towards the center of the nail with a smaller bead to kind of help maintain that blend it's going to be a smaller and wetter bead and you can see i'm adding that and i'm back brushing it and i'm just fading it back down just to make sure that that ombre is still good we're going to be adding glitter so it doesn't have to be the most amazing thing ever but we just want to make sure it still looks good so i'm adding just another small wet bead to help facilitate that fade and then i'm going to cap it with clear because you always want to protect your blend always even with a refill so i'm just smoothing out that clear it doesn't have to be a, a ton because we didn't file product all the way down so i'm not trying to like build the whole structure of the nail with the clear i'm just adding a thin layer just so when i file i'm not at risk of filing off the um, ombre that I just added to the nail. Now this is extremely sped up. I went ahead and filed the shape into the nail with the hand file. Sorry, I don't have that on camera. But I did that first. And then I go in with my electric file and file the um, finish file, the actual surface of the nail. And then I go in after that with my cross cut bit, which is a diamond bit. And it basically takes the place of a hand file. So after this, you'll see me going with that other bit. And that way I can get real nice and tight around the cuticle area. But then I'm also adding that texture and preparing that nail to be buffed. So this is that cross cut bit. And essentially, like I said, this is what I'm using in place of hand buffing. After I do this, I go in with a hand file and check the shape again of my nails because sometimes you'll round out your corners when you're doing your hand i mean your um, electric filing so it's nice to go back in and sharpen up your corner so this is the finished filed nail you can see the product application and everything so i'm going to be using this gel from dnd &D, or is it called daisy daisy D? I i don't know girl you've seen it i'm using this holographic polish from color club called eternal beauty and this cat eye gel called flying purple from madam glam and this kind of smells like grapes they don't advertise that it does but it does and this color is called hey honey again from madam glam y'all know i love madam glam use code tabitha for 30 percent off and then i'm using a cuticle brush and i'm just cleaning that dust out from around the cuticle area and I'm going to take this brush, it doesn't look cute at that moment, but I'm gonna use this to help blend down this glitter fade I'm doing on these um, nails that are going to be ombre. And you can see how I apply the bulk of the product towards the cuticle area, and I'm taking just the actual glitter pieces and bringing it down the nail and get it to look exactly how I want it to look. And then once I get you know those chunks and pieces where I want them, I'm going to go ahead and cure 
and you can see me doing this again on the other hand and again same process i'm just using this brush you don't necessarily you don't have to have one of these like weird ombre ish brushes girl you could do this with a plain just regular brush but this just because it has a little fine bristles at the tip i like it do you need it no you can just use the brush from the actual um gel polish bottle and wipe it off and get it dry and use that if you wanted to so you know don't get stuck that you need this so i'm just adding a second coat after i cure it just to add a little more concentration at the cuticle and it gives it a better ombre look when you have it you know more concentrated at the cuticle or the tip or wherever you're doing it and then it fades out so i'm going in i apply protein bond you know, I love protein bond. I let it dry, apply my top coat, and then I'll top coat this twice because there could be texture from the glitter. So I put it in the light. I'll apply another layer of protein bond so that original top coat layer will stick to the second top coat layer. So I apply protein bond, let it air dry 10 seconds, and then I apply my second coat of top coat and then cure yet again. And now we have a smooth nail. We don't have to worry about that separation when you apply two layers of top coat that you can get sometimes. And it's good to go. So I'm just going and applying that plain purple color to the remainder of the nails. Um, well, to the ones that are going to be the holographic and the ones that are going to be the glitter polish that we use for the ombre. I'm going to apply this color this way that the the tone of that glitter and that holographic color kind of stays the same because it has this under it to kind of guide the the shade and the tone that it's going to be so i am going in with my cat eye and it's, i'm just going to apply a layer of that this color has really really good coverage once i apply the color i'm going to go in with my magnet now i do mess up on this you're going to catch it a little bit later in the video. <laughs> so I'm going in after I apply that base color and adding the glitter. So you see what I mean, how that base color guides the tone. It's not allowing it to be like a different tone of purple because we're using the same base color for, you know, everything, basically. This now I think is going. Oh, this is going to be the one with the stone. So we're applying two coats of that. Now you see this line. It's going from top right to bottom left. <laughs> I messed this up and I honestly didn't even realize it until I got ready to edit this video. <laughs> so but at the time that I finished these nails, didn't realize it. So I held my magnet going from top left to bottom right. And you can see the line underneath of it. I didn't even notice. Not until now did I notice. But it's okay. My client probably didn't even notice either. So I'm just showing you, I'm just painting that um, holographic color over that base purple. And again, that helps with the tone. So now both the glitter nail and this nail, and of course the plain purple nail, all have that same shade of purple as a base. So I am using Swarovski crystals. I'm using, I think the biggest one I use is a 16. I'm using some 12, some size 9s and some sevens and I'm using this color it's called heliotrope Heli heliotrope and there's size 12 and 9 and I'm using these micro beads those are so cheap you can get them almost any from any nail supplier and I'm using the nailed by John herpes gel and I'm going in on this nail and I am applying the crystals as I see fit. I'm kind of going, you know, with the flow that I feel. I am using this tool. It's not a crystal katana, but it is a knockoff of a crystal katana. I'm sorry, Miss Crystal Ninja. I was sent it and it works okay. But um, I just use one end to pick up the gel, that uh, metal tip to pick up the gel and apply it to the nail. You can use a brush. I do that at times and i apply the crystals when you're using gels to apply crystals you want to make sure that you have a good amount to set the crystal into you don't want just the tiniest amount because that gel needs to coat the edge the very edge of the crystal you don't want it on top of it but at least at the very edge and that's what's going to help hold them crystals in and make sure they last so i'm picking up the micro beads with the tip 
of um, this tool, as you can see. And because uh, it has a little bit of that um, product on there. So it's allowing me to pick up the micro beads and I'm placing them where I see fit. And I love adding micro beads to, like any look. It makes it look so much more elegant than put together kind of like jewelry in a way. Kind of look like it's um, prong setted into the nail. <laughs> but this is the look. Got it all together. End up flipping her hand over and straightening it out. So it'll be a little more straighter, of course. And now I cured that in the light. And then I'm going in with my top coat. And I believe I used the Joya Mia top coat. Or maybe the Poochie's Nails top coat. I don't know. But I'm just using a small brush to apply it around the stones and get in those tight areas. Never on the stones. Never apply top coat on your stones. I'm like shaking you. Don't do it. <laughs> And uh, you want to make sure you apply that top coat over your beads. Anything, like if you're doing any type of charms that are metal looking, gold, silver, rose gold, apply top coat to them. That'll help protect them and keep their color longer. So this is the finished look from that. And you literally want to apply that top coat in every nook and cranny, just not on the stones. Cure that. Get some moisture, apply some cuticle oil, and we are done. This is the final look. Pretty simple. Nothing too extravagant. This is just a, you know, video just, just literally watching me work. <laughs> you know, nothing too crazy. There's some pretty simple looks out here that are fun. And these are my client's natural nails. I don't want y'all to say I didn't say it. It's her natural nails with the overlay. You can see that pointer finger. It curves because her natural nail curves. We don't fix it. She doesn't want to. We don't want to waste the time. It's fine. But anyways, moving on. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe, comment, thumbs up. I appreciate you guys. Bye.